I have not had one of these games in a very, very long time. So I'm very excited to show you this one. Although I don't know if this sort of thing is going to continue to happen as we go forward since submarines are being added into random battles come the next patch. So we'll have to see how that really works out. But uh, my guess is it's going to result in less surface ships and less ships being spotted overall. We already have the destroyer class that really doesn't want to be spotted. Light cruisers probably also fall into that category. Adding submarines, of course, is going to boost that number of ships that operate out of stealth, right? So, and that's on top of aircraft carriers. So I think we're going to see a lot more matches where we just don't have ships spotted, ships to shoot at. And that's unfortunate. But this match is the exact opposite of that. This is as close as you can get to old school World of Warships. There's some exceptions. I think my ship is probably one of the worst offenders as far as being uh, a little bit broken and bad for the meta. <laughs> Considering I'm playing a Yamato at tier nine into what is essentially ships that are not really comparable at the same tier. This thing overmatches all the battleships and of course, cruisers we're going to absolutely crush if our dispersion cooperates. It's not quite a Yamato, of course. Mizashi is a Yamato with worse Sigma and worse AA. But, I mean, look at that health pool. That's pretty nice. And of course, assuming that there's not a ton of HE spammers and CVs in the game, or I guess soon to be uh, submarines, we're going to have the opportunity to play this ship a little closer to the ma match and a little bit more bow in that kind of thing you don't have to constantly be feeling like you have to kite away a lot of times you'll see me do that in videos where i push up a little bit but i always give myself time before the action starts or between ships reloads when i know i'm relatively safe to turn out and get myself into a position where i can run away very quickly that is how basically every ship is played these days when there's potentially a lot of pressure on you and that makes it really nice and easy to run away but it also has this side effect of well incentivizing you to run away <laughs> at the slightest hint of danger and well it's not the best strategy obviously it doesn't work that amazing bow tanking used to be a pretty big thing back in the day and i think it resulted in maybe a few more closer range engagements I'm not saying that this is ever going to come back, and I don't actually know if I want it to come back the way it was, just because bow tanking is something that people have learned how to counter over time, along with the ships just getting better at dealing with it. But that's what we're going to do in this one. It's going to be a little bit rough as, uh, as the game goes along, but it started out pretty nicely. In fact, we got a really, really, really good hit in onto that Brindisi earlier. And uh, something you really want to make sure you do if you're running the Italian ships at all with that fuel smoke screen, make sure you pop your smoke and go undetected before you start maneuvering. If you don't do that, somebody can predict where you're going and, uh, well, what you saw could happen to you, right? Um, unfortunately, it looks like we're losing a couple of our ships a little sooner than the enemy team at this point. And something I do... Uh, it's a bit of a misplay, I would say, throughout this entire game. Is I don't don't really shoot at DDs. That is something you should be doing as a battleship player if you want to win matches. However, I was trying to finish dockyard missions here, and in that last dockyard mission, there is something for battleships where they have to do a bunch of damage. And so that's what I was going for. I was looking for targets of opportunity, and I was trying to do as much damage as I possibly could. And this game really helped me get through that dockyard mission. I'll be honest, that was awesome. Uh, fast tracking me through a couple matches that I didn't actually have to play. And that's how I got the uh, D7 Provincian. It was uh, a nice little thing that allowed me to get a head start this weekend on that review of that ship that went up yesterday. I think that maybe this game could be like this again with a few minor changes, honestly. if. Wargaming 1, stop with the submarines going the way they are. And 2, I think they could actually balance CVs. They seem to really, really want them in the game. I think there's ways of making CV gameplay feel a little bit more balanced and a little bit more fair for the person getting struck. And maybe even making it a little bit more fun for the person playing the ship. But my ideas all revolve around making it more of a support role ship, dropping 
care packages and that thing for your own teammates. That way you're doing, you're less of a damage dealer, you're, you're more of a healer. And maybe then we could see some more pushing, right? If you got the support of your carrier with you, you can push a little easier. I don't know, little ideas like that that probably wouldn't actually work, but <laughs> I just really like the way this game is when we have the three major classes and that's it. I think they're just more interesting games where you get scenarios where Donskoys push through the middle of the map and your team gets kind of pushed to the sides, but then they get crossfires and I don't know. I just like these types of things a little bit more. But as far as strategy is concerned, this is a pretty basic one. I got in over my head and any sort of turn out here would probably result in my death at this point since, well, there's some Georges around. And of course, there's also the Alsace, which maybe isn't the most accurate chip in the world, but it can really hurt when uh, when it gets that good accuracy. The pen on those 380s is pretty high, enough that he'll easily be able to Citadel me if I do turn broadside. So we're kind of stuck here, but we do have a lot of heals and a lot of health left. Hopefully, well, what I'm trying to do is stall out long enough that my teammates from A can come across and we can crossfire the enemy team and win this match, right? I'm assuming these guys aren't gonna try to push out too far, uh, given that the B islands offer a little bit of safety from those crossfires that I was talking about, but uh, we're about to get rushed down here. And smartly, I think these enemies are actually targeting the Azumo and the Iowa instead of me. You notice I haven't really been shot at all that much recently. And I think that's down to the enemy team doing a good job of target priority. Um, you know, I'm forced broadside now with the Azumo, so they'll start shooting at me. But I was angled quite well, but uh, dealing with an angled Musashi is much more difficult than an, an Azumo or an Iowa, just because of how much more HP this ship has. But now we're really going to see the value of this overmatch. Overmatch, of course, is a mechanic that I've talked about that I don't really like, but I don't really see any other way around it. Anytime I try and come up with a solution to overmatch, it just results in everybody being able to go bow in to each other, and then we just get a bunch of bow in, stay, or stern in, I guess, probably, would make more sense, allowing you to move away a little bit easier and retreat sooner uh, without getting overmatched. Anytime I think of that, it just results in uh, AP just not really being able to do a whole lot, and then maybe that creates some interesting gameplay where you buff HE in certain ways and nerf it in other ways. I don't know, but... Uh, it's tough. I think balancing around overmatch gun caliber uh, armor levels is a bit of a difficult one because I really don't like how overmatch just allows me to negate anything this Alsace is doing, right? This guy's covered in 32 mil armor. I overmatch all of it. And while that's really nice for me, for that guy, it's not really that fun to play against that because it feels like anything you do, the incoming damage is just guaranteed. It's one of the reasons that CVs, I think, are so hated, right? And Overmatch, well, not as oppressive as aircraft carriers, in my opinion. I think Overmatch is one of those things that doesn't feel very good. And it's one of those things that I've tried to think of solutions, but I don't really come up with anything. So if you've got an idea, maybe let me know. I think it'd be interesting to talk about, interesting to think about. But uh, Georgia found out what happens when you go broadside and... Well, I had to get lucky, of course. Musashi Dispersion doesn't always treat me that well. <laughs> but we're already up to 215,000 damage. But yeah, if you have an idea about Overmatch or different things like that, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to thinking of different things that might help the game. Of course, none of it really matters because we know that uh, Wargaming is probably going to do what they want, regardless of what we think. So. We're going to have to uh, keep that in mind when we decide talk about balance, right? That at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we think, right? But that buffalo also figured out what happens when you go broadside, which was a pleasant surprise. I'll be honest, hitting that Georgia and then hitting that buffalo back to back was a really, really pleasant surprise and, uh, well, needed if we're going to have any hope of winning this game. But... You'll see that the enemy team has three DDs left and all of ours have died. That's where my misplay really has cost us this game. And wow, I get, I don't know what angle that was, but I get some Citadel on that Buffalo again. Overmatch, right? Um, yeah, my misplay this game for sure was not targeting the destroyers. The battleships, the cruisers, that damage could wait. 
Destroyers should be your target of priority if you want to win games. And while I didn't go into this match thinking I really want to win this one, at this point I really do. This is a really, really good game <laughs> by any tier 9 battleship, and including Musashi. It's a really, really strong one, and capping that out with a win is really, really nice. But losing all of our DDs without really being able to trade much, especially the Jutland, has, well, pretty much full HP according to these uh, side panel mods, which are pretty handy for knowing how much of a chance you have, which we don't really have too much of a chance. This Georgia plays very smart, of course, just shooting HE at me. He knows that I'm going to bounce everything that his AP does, and Musashi has this weird feature of having a smaller superstructure than the Yamato, so it's actually tankier Bowin than a Yamato is. Um, so yeah, shooting HE at me is definitely the right play. As annoying as it is for me, uh, it's definitely, definitely the right play. We use our damage control, and we're going to get a heal soon, so I think we can deal with one or two more fires without uh, dying quite yet. There's our Confederate, 283,000 damage, a ridiculous score, and I think this is easily the most damage I've ever done in the Musashi, and that is surprising for me because I've always felt like my damage records that I've got in the past are pretty much set because... The way people play has evolved. I do think people have gotten better at this game over time. And that some of the videos, if we go back and look at really old videos of this game from some of the original content creators for it, or even just some old replay files, that kind of thing, that managed to stay alive on WoW's replays, that kind of thing. I notice a lot of people playing way worse, sitting broadside far more often, not maneuvering when they're spotted or getting shot at. I think people do generally have better game sense now than they did before. So for me to get a damage record in my Musashi like that feels pretty good. It really, really does. And again, the theme of overmatch continues with this thing. Yamato, Musashi, definitely carried by that ability to overmatch. The hulls aren't particularly good. The AA, pretty bad on all of them. But that overmatch just seems to keep it relevant. And... There we go, 323,000 damage, and even 2.5 million potential damage, which is pretty good considering uh, the way that I was playing. I think potential damage is pretty rare to get that much of when you're going to be bow in. It's really, really easy to hit someone who's bow in, right? It doesn't take much to aim. When you're maneuvering, full speed, angled, that kind of thing, that's when you can get those bigger potential damage games. So I was pretty happy, although unfortunately you see that our Marco Polo is about to go down, and then it's just going to be me left. Solo warrior, potentially? <laughs> that would be, what, uh, eight kill solo warrior? I'd have to hit every shot. And, uh, well, I think my luck has uh, just about run out at this point. Or just my inability to aim. This uh, Brindisi played well, baiting me into thinking he was slowing down. I think he was slowing down there, but he reacted well for my shot and sped up out of the way. Well played to him. And honestly, I was pretty happy with this game. Even though it ended in a loss, pretty excited to get something this amazing out of a ship that I really don't play all that often. So that even resulted in over a million credits, even on a loss, and exactly 100 hits got us there. So pretty cool game. Um, I'm not going to show you the build because the build was really bad. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a secondary build that I was testing when we had free respecs, and... Uh, well, I forgot to reset this one, <laughs> so uh, if you're wondering on Yamato or Musashi, you should be running fire prevention, concealment, and extra heals. Probably adrenaline rush, and probably uh, basics of survivability, right? Getting rid of those fires sooner. That's what I would recommend for you. So thank you very much for watching this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.